Hello, Lana. So I trust you are uh, all well. I am your instructor, CPA Ringo Frederick. Today's session, I want to answer a question that majority of you you've always asked. In the event that you're not given probability, Molemo, how will you be able to determine the standard deviation? That will be in our series of, uh, of course, this revision that we did, or that we are doing. So uh, if at all you are preparing for your coming exams for financial management or any unit for CPA, and you feel like uh, you're still not stable, be sure to contact us. Yeah, our revision classes, I know 100% sure they will work magic. That one I can assure you, I'm 100% sure that our revision classes will work magic for you. So make sure that you've contacted us, right? Of course, our numbers are as indicated on the screen below. Today we are handling portfolio analysis. And by now, I know this concept must be at your fingertips. Just a reminder, anytime you're talking of a portfolio, what are we looking at? We are looking at collection of investments, right? And the main objective of us having these investments or the main objective of us talking of uh, collecting this investment, it is simply to do what? To reduce risk. So you'll find that the main objective or the main aim of portfolio formation is what? Risk minimization. And it is at this point that Molimu will ask us, do we still recall the types of risks that we are looking at? Recall Molimu guided us about this, right? This is just a revision. I know we had uh, looked at this. So our main aim today was to handle uh, the standard deviation, uh, of course, uh, without probability. But it is important for Molimu to remind us about this, right? So this is our risk. And this, of course, is our portfolio. So looking at these types of risks, this is what we realized. That... There are some certain risks which are going to be reduced by holding what? By holding a portfolio, whereby you'll find that uh, I can just, uh, first of all, uh, let me minimize this question so that at least you can concentrate on this. Molimu is guiding us now. So you'll find that uh, we're seeing there are these risks which can be minimized by holding a portfolio, right? There are these risks which can be minimized by holding a portfolio. Assuming this is risk one, this is P1. See, the more portfolio I have, the lesser risk I'll be encountering. The lesser risk that I'll be encountering. The more portfolio I hold, the lesser risk that we will be maintaining or rather that we'll be encountering. But it will reach a point whereby, regardless of this risk that, uh, regardless of the portfolio that I'm having, the risk will just be constant. The risk will just be constant. So you'll find that uh, that is the point that you're talking about. This is the point. Regardless of the portfolio that I'm having, a risk will just be constant. Then there is area whereby, regardless of the portfolio that you are having, regardless of the portfolio that you're holding, this portfolio will not minimize your risks. So this will bring us to the two component of risks that we talked about. Remember, we talked about unsystematic risks. Unsystematic risks. Unsystematic risks. Unsystematic. Unsystematic risks. Yeah? And we also talk about the systematic risks. Systematic risks. Recall this. I know we talked about this. So unsystematic risks are simply the risks that can be minimized through portfolio formation. You see, the more portfolio I have, the lesser risk you're going to do what? To have. But... There are these risks, regardless of the portfolio that I'm having, they can't be minimized. So, systematic risks. These are type of business risks which cannot be minimized by holding a portfolio. It affects the whole 
industry. It affects the whole company, companies. Like a good example is the Black Swan event that happened in 2020, right? Remember COVID-19. Regardless of the portfolio that you're having, you are affected. You are affected. You are affected. So that is a form of risk that you are referring to as well, systematic risk. Regardless of the portfolio that you're having, you're going to be affected. Mm -hmm. So this is very important. We also talked about the methods of uh, measuring risks. Just a quick one, a quick recall. The methods that we normally tend to use in measuring risks. We talk about the expected value, or in this case, uh, remember, we talk about aspect of uh, the expected values, we talk about standard deviation, we talk about coefficient of variation. See, all these are the forms of methods that we talk about. We talk about the variance component. So, I won't go on that because you had looked at that earlier. Or if you've not checked it out, remember you can get the video that I did uh, earlier on so that at least you make sure that at least you review that. Our concern today, I want us to look at an area whereby, yes, you're given uh, a, a problem to handle, but in this case, the good examiner has not given you probability. How do you go about it? These are questions that I want us to look at. This is a question that I want us to consider, which I believe is very visible to all of us. Mm -hmm. Believing that uh, that question is very visible to all of us. So these are what you are told in our good question here. A good examiner told us that, that is a part B of the question specifically. You are told that uh, a financial expert has uh, provided has provided you the following data regarding the returns of Mrebo Limited shares for the year ending 2017 to 2021. So I'm given here, we are given return on uh, Mebco Limited shares. Then required here, a good examiner wants us to determine the risk in Mebco's Limited shares return as measured by the standard deviation. But you can all see that we are not given probabilities. We are not given probabilities. So the question would be, how will you work it out? If you are not given probabilities, how will you maneuver through the question? How will you maneuver through that question? You're not given probability, yes. But the question now would be, how will you go through that question? So this would be simple. This would be very simple. We are given our years, which are basically uh, our number of data values. So we are given 2017. Yeah, we are given uh, 2017. Uh, of course, we are given 2017, 2018, and uh, of course, uh, up to 2021, right? Those are the periods given by our good examiner here. These are the periods given by our examiner. So we're having 2017, we're having uh, 2018, 2017, 2018 here, 2019 here, uh, 2020, talk about 2021. Then we also given our returns in terms of uh, the shares. So our returns we are given in 2017, you had 18, 16, we had 10, we have 6, and we have 8. I can now remove the question, right? Let me remove the question. Let me remove the question here. So those are the details that you are given, my good students. Remember, at all times, taking you back to the methods, take you back to the methods, methods of determining our risks. It is very important that you go back to the basics when we are looking at an introduction portfolio. We talk about the expected return. We talk about the expected returns. To determine the expected returns, you are looking at a case whereby we are talking about probability, of course, times what? Return. Or return times probability. 
then we were summing it up. In the event that you are not given your returns, expected returns without probability, recall, it will be upon us to determine summation of our total returns we divide by n value. We divide by our n value. A good examiner here wants us to determine our standard deviation. Mm -hmm. I'm taking you through the steps. This was number one. Number two, my good students here, we say that we'll be talking about what? Variance. Looking at our variance, in this case, we said we can always determine our variance by taking what? We take the difference between our return and our expected return. This case, we square times probability summation. That will give us our variance. If you are not given probability, we also agreed that if not, of course, given probability, you can still determine your variance. How will you determine your variance in the absence of probability? We are going to take, of course, our returns minus expected returns. This case, we square. That is summation. What you are going to do this time around, my good students, you are going to divide your value, of course, by n minus 1. Then that took us to number 3, standard deviation. That took us to number 3, standard deviation. So how do you determine your standard deviation? Our standard deviation, we said that this is simply square root of variance. If I told you to talk of the first one, I'll be having r minus expected return, of course, squared times probability. Then we do what? We square root. In the event that I don't have our probability, we are talk of r minus expected return. We square this one, summation, divide by n minus 1, square root. See, this is what we did. This is what we did. So our task number one here is to determine our expected returns. See, the good examiner wants us to determine our standard deviation. You can't determine your standard deviation without your expected returns. So what will be your expected returns? What will be our expected returns? Let us sum up our returns. Let us sum up our returns. If we sum up our returns, I'll be having, of course, 18 plus 16 plus 10 plus 6 plus 8 to give us a value of 58. So this is our summation. So my good students, what will be my expected return here? Our expected return, therefore, we can agree we are going to take, or we are going to talk about, let us do it here, below here. We are going to take our 58, divide by the number of data values. Number of data values, I'm having 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. These are the number of data values, divide by 5. So therefore, my expected return will be 58 divided by 5 to give us what? 11.6. So we have our 11.6. We go to the next element. I need to determine our variance. We need to determine our variance. We need to determine our variance. So for us to have our variance, all I'll be required, of course, to do here is to consider our actual returns minus expected returns. So all I'm going to do here we are going to less our expected return, 11.6, 11.6, 11.6, 11.6, 11.6. All this, we do what? 
we square we square this one square square squared 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 so that as at the end of the day what will you be having mm -hmm. so in this case you're going to take our calculator of course we have our calculator sorry we are having a value of 18 minus 6 18 minus 11.6 18 minus 11.6 we square that one, this should give us 40.96. So I'm having a 40.96. 16 minus 11.6 squared, that should give us 19.36. Okay. We're having 10 minus 11.6 squared, that should give us 2.56. 6 minus 11.6 squared, that should give us 31.36. And finally, 8 minus 11.6, we square that one, that should give us 12.96. What is the summation? That should give us 12.96 plus 31.36, uh, so I'm having uh, 40.96 plus 19.36, okay, plus 2.56, plus 31.36, plus 12.96. Molimu is getting 107.2. I don't know what you are getting, but Molimu here is getting 107.2. So once we have our summation, remember we are in this formula. We want to determine our variance. So, at this point, we have 107.2, we divide by n number of data values, which is 5 minus 1. So our variance will be divided by 4. So I'm getting a variance of 26.8. Then the other step, we need to now to determine our standard deviation. A standard deviation, you know very well, we are talking of what? The square root of our variance. So therefore, my standard deviation would be square root of 26.8. So square root answer, we're getting 5.18 being our standard deviation, being our standard deviation, being our standard deviation, 5.18. 1, 8 being our standard deviation. You see, so this is how you can determine your standard deviation without probability. Is your question answered? A lot of you have asked Molimu about that question. Molimu, how do you determine standard deviation without probability? Then I believe your question now has been answered using that simple illustration that we had. So as I mentioned earlier on, our revision classes have commenced. For those who are interested, of course, with the theory q and I'm attaching a paper below this video. This will entail all the questions for theory q and &A. And I believe they'll help us a lot. I believe they'll help us a lot. So take that chance and go through the same. To this point, I want us to meet in the next session whereby I want us to handle a very interesting uh, a very interesting uh, concept of course in uh, financial management and this is about uh, a concept to do with a uh, replacement decision replacement decision so let us meet in our next session when you're going to handle that to that point see you then bye bye